so pleased to to welcome to the show an educator. He's a broadcaster for the past 22 years. He's a retired teacher from the Pasadena School District, father of 13 children, and a two-time senior champion in the three-on-three 70s basketball division, the great Roland Bynum. Good morning, Roland. Good morning. And all those attributes, I kind of wondered who you was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we didn't wonder. We know. Um, a lot to talk about this morning, and I hope you'll help me unpack some of these hot topics. But I think you are on everybody's hot topic list right now. People have been asking about you. People have been inquiring about uh, your book and all of the things that you have going on in the middle of this pandemic. So let's start with the book. What is the deal? Well, it is a um, a book that uh, that I, that was given to me by people who heard my story. And um, the more I shared my story, the more people told, told me I should write a book. And I, I think a lot of people get that all of the time. And I, I really never uh, gave it a thought. But the more I heard it, the more... It came into my spirit that, you know, I've never written a book. I mean, even though I'm an English teacher and I'm an educator, I taught in the Pasadena High School District. And and so I took up the adventure 15 years ago. I decided to, um, let's see, uh, let's see what happens. And and so um, I I didn't really know how to write a book. I probably still don't. uh, After 15 years of... Pretty sure you do. Well... Well, here's what happened. Um, uh, I'm a recovering person, 31 years clean. And, and he explained that uh, in the shot of God's love, a chance happening with profound meaning and an unexpected blessing. And he began to share that. And it never, ever left me. So when I began to think about writing, that was the title of the book that I made my decision. And the title of the book that I've written is called God Shots. Life is a journey, but it's nothing without God and so I began to um, put it together I just didn't do this by myself a lot of prayer a lot of uh, conversation my cousin uh, Stacy who transitioned last year gave me an idea said Roland write vignettes and so what I did was is, and people are listening who, who probably want to write a book this is what I did I took my life and I began to write in five year segments and I began to put those things that happened to me from 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15, and so forth. And I began to fill in those areas with my life. And it began to take progress. But what happened is, uh, during this 15 years, I, be, I went back to college and I got two master's degrees, I dominated. And so uh, what it did was allow me to do research. And actually, getting my master's in counseling drove me to uh, uh, find out things about me, my family, and who I am. And I was able to transfer a lot of that information into my life and into this book. And so that's how I began, and that's, 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 what, it, that's what it's about. It's, it's my life. I'm going to say this. When you read the book, you'll find that I was taken out of my mother's arms at 11 months. My brother Tyrone was two years old. My mother was a teenage mother in the black bottom of Detroit, Michigan. She was too poor to take care of us. And so I was placed in an institution called the Children's Aid Society and, uh, in the city of Detroit. And from there, I began uh, my life and, and uh, a very uh, lonely life and a motherless, fatherless, brotherless, sisterless life. And uh, from that, when my children, when, my, when I talked to my children, I actually wrote this book for my children. Because my children, I want them to know who I am and, 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 and the legacy of our family. And so it starts with me. Uh, my father, when he died, he left an oral history. And I think that's great. But I think if you write it down, you're able to carry it on. You can actually see it and take it with you. And so, uh, Dominique, I, I decided to write this book for my children. And I have 13 children. And I've been blessed with... Um, uh, 10 grandchildren and I have six well five and one on the way great grandchildren and so this book is for them and for the yet unborn of who I am and who we are as a family because in there the dynamics of the family and so that's what that's what happened and um, 
but this is uh, the results of that. And uh, and I'm, you know, when people say I'm an author, I never looked at myself as an author. I guess I should now because this have is my to first now. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations. I mean, it's more than a notion. And I love that you took your time, 15 years in the making, um, written like a true uh, double master's degree holder, written carefully, uh, thoroughly, and offered to the world. But it comes out, it's not like you wrote, wrote it 15 years ago. It's coming out this week. Yeah, and, and it's coming out Saturday. Uh, in fact... Um I have a good friend, Roger Tremell. We went to different schools together in Eastern Michigan. He's been a real inspiration in my life. Um, Roger um, uh, got me involved in teaching. He came to me one day and said, well, then you should teach. And I said, teach? I'm a disc jockey. I'm an entertainer, you know. And uh, he said, get off, your, uh, get off your high horse, man. You should teach. And I asked him why. Now, I want the audience to hear this. Roger told me that we needed more men teachers, especially African American male teachers. So true. And, he, and still and true. So what I just yeah, still true. And what I discovered uh, from that conversation, when, when I took away from that conversation, I said, "He's a really used to teach." And I thought on it. I meditated on it. And I hate talking about meditating. And I meditated on it, and I said, "You know, I think I can do that." I didn't even have a teacher's uh, credential, but I said, "I think I can do that." And I think it's a worthy calling. And so I did. And um, and, and I discovered that 2% of the teaching population only are, are black men. The rest of 98% of the teaching population do not look like me. And so I said, that is a worthy cause. Well, And we wonder uh, why we have an achievement gap. Absolutely. Yes. And so uh, I, I took up the calling and I did. And I got my teacher's credential and I got my... Uh, um, um, another master's and like I said I picked up two masters in, in, in the ensuing process but wow. Roger was very instrumental in helping me write this book and, 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 and sort, sort it he's written about 8 or 9 or 10 books himself Wow! and if, if you google his name you'll see how much, how much he's done but he's guided me and others have guided me through this process so I just didn't do it by myself Oof. and uh, I'm just thankful for those who supported me well, I've been trying to get mine done for quite some time but um Maybe I'll read yours and become more inspired to get mine <laughs> together. So, if you don't mind me asking, how long... And by the way, you became a teacher but never gave up being a DJ. So, you actually lived and a dad multiple lives at once. Um, how long have you been a teacher and how long have you been a DJ? Or air personality, as we say now. Yes, um... Actually, my uh, beginning started uh, November 22nd, 1963, when I was at Los Angeles City College. And this is, uh, the, yeah, this, this is in the book. Um, I was in the Marine Corps with Lee Harvey Oswald. And uh, one of my classmates on that, that, that Friday, November 22nd, 1963, one of my classmates, Elliot Mint, in my MTV, who was 18 and I was 22, a newer story and uh, uh, interviewed me. I was heard by uh, KFWB, and which I didn't know for 50 years is that that interview was heard um, internationally and nationally. I was the first person to be interviewed about Lee Harvey Oswald before his wife and his mother. And um, Elliot went on to become an international publicist for uh, stars like uh, Paris Hilton and John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Uh, very well known. And from there, it began there. I became the program director of the college station. Got my first job, a commercial job in 1966, Montgomery, Alabama. I worked at WCHB, Eastern Michigan, and got a call in 1967 to come to Los Angeles to take magnificent Burn, Baby Burn, Montague's job at KGFJ. And I was placed up against the famous Wolfman Jack. And we battled all night long. So wow. it's been a... That's amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's a lot yeah, of history. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been blessed. And um, and um, I, I did Armed Forces Radio for 15 years, heard worldwide, internationally. And I came to KJLH um, in 1998, March the 8th. I'm a numerologist also. Dates are very important. Mm. So you've been doing KJLH for over... 
20 years. 20 years. Yeah, yeah, but you've been doing radio almost 60 years. That's incredible. Yeah. Congratulations on most people don't last a week. <laughs> well, that's by the blessings of God, I would say. Uh, I, I just think, uh, and also you got to do your due diligence. You just can't walk into a, anything and don't put the work in. And I think yeah. that's what it is. You have to have a love for it also. And you don't want to make it a job. You want to make it a career. You want to make it a love. And if it's a love, it's it's easy to do. You know, it's funny because I always uh, joke that radio is one of those things that's harder than it looks like being president. You know, it looks like you could just get a mic and talk. Looks like you just order people around. Probably more to it than that. Um, on the president side, I wouldn't know, but definitely on the radio side. And in the classroom, right. in the classroom, we've been teaching for how long? I, I actually started in 1995. I um, mm, okay. uh, at Washington Middle School. Um, I went into a position for six weeks, and uh, they had nine previous subs who would, who ran out of there, out of the <laughs> class, because the students were so disruptive. And I went in, and the principal was giving a, 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 a sermon. I told him to stop. I don't need that. And I went in and settled the class down. And in six weeks, we were able to uh, get the eighth graders through what they needed to do. It was science. What I knew about science, I took the book home, read the book the day before, and taught the next day. Took wow. the book home the next day and taught the next day. <laughs> Teach and, as you go. <laughs> and so, it, it, exactly. And so what happened is, is uh, the September, I got a call to go to Norma Coons uh, Alternative School in Pasadena. And I'll stay there for two years as a long-term sub. So, and um, and uh, then I opened up my own business with my brother, telemarketing company, but I decided to come back to teaching in 2001. That's amazing and, because it just shows you, I mean, yes, your personal power as an entertainer, as a, as a scholar, but also the impact of having a black man and a dad step into the classroom. And, you know, yeah, no, you know, I got this. I know how to settle some kids down. <laughs> Pretty much. I, you know what? I, I want to tell you, uh, Dominique, that it wasn't about me. It was about the young people. And what I did was is I listened to the children and the children were begging for somebody to come and teach them. They wanted a teacher. And I heard that. And I went home and I told my wife, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to go back. I think what you're asking for is a real teacher. There's somebody to love them, somebody to teach them. And so, and, and that was a very important aspect for me because it taught me that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about the superintendent. It wasn't about the principal. It wasn't about the school. It was about the children. And you have to listen to them. You have to find out what their needs are. You have to meet them where they are. And once you meet them where they are, you then give them what they need. And, and I discovered that very early in my teaching. And, and, you know, what, and I want to talk about that um, more as we go on, because I'd love to hear your thoughts about, you know, distance learning and pandemic and how we can best support our kids and about a million other things. Want to talk about some sure. of these news stories uh, you noticed. Uh, I, uh, you know, dedicated Janet Jackson uh, nasty today to uh, nice. Kamala Devi Harris, um, because nice. some of us, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's really the nasty boys. Uh no offense, Roland Bynum, but it's really no, the it's Donald good. Trumps of the world that are nasty. Uh, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Miss DePrima, if you're nasty. Lots of people want to talk to you, Roland Bynum. Starting with Wendell calling us from L.A. Good morning, Wendell. Well, greetings. Hey, Overstan. Good morning. Good morning. What's happening? Good I uh, just want to congratulate you. On your book, I mean, I know we talked a long time about your your your, your life's journey and everything, and you accomplished quite a bit. You are the personification of uh, the airwaves to me in Los Angeles, and I've enjoyed you, you know, our conversations quite a bit. But the most impressive thing about you, my brother, is you are a man of God. That is one of the most impressive things about you, and I wish you the best, and... Uh, I'm not going to tie the lines up because I know a lot of people want to speak to you, man. But, uh, you know, you you, you, you you take care, man. Uh, and God bless. Okay, I thank you so much, Wendell. And I, I just want to say this, um, um, Dominique. A lot of people have been asking, is Roland Bynum? 
and why it's going to be on the air. Well, let me say this. Uh, we knew that some time ago that uh, one of our salesmen uh, came down with the COVID-19. In fact, two people did at the radio station. And Stevie Wonder, uh, in his infinite wisdom, uh, sanitized the station. And they told me to go home because I'm the senior citizen of radio. And at, at that time, we knew that most of the people that were being uh, uh, killed and died from this uh, this scourge of this disease were senior citizens. And so, you know, I'm a Marine. And once a Marine, always a Marine. And I'm a Marine, and I'm do, I do what I'm told. And Thank so you for your home. service, by the way, Roland. Oh, absolutely. You're welcome. Uh, and, um, and like Ron McHugh, he's a, he's a Marine also. And, and, and this is what I want to say. I take orders and I follow my orders. And so I'm told to stay home and that's what I'm doing. But let me tell you what's going on. It has allowed me to spend more time with my daughter, with my wife, with myself, with my God, with my book. And when time permits, when time comes, I will be back on the air and we will pick it up right where we left off, continuing to do that which is good for our community. So I thank you for your concern, but I'm not ill. I'm running four miles a day. I meditate. Wow. Uh, I'm, yeah. And um, and all Every the basketball day. courts are closed. Every day. Four miles. I'm going up to five. And um, next year, I just want to say I'm planning to run Senior Olympics track. Well, I've never been a track person, but I'm challenging every 80-year-old in America in the 50, the 200, and the 100-yard dash. So come get me. <laughs> are you 80, Roland Bynum? <laughs> I, I will be 80 when... Let me tell you, David. In time I will for the Olympics. 80. No, no. Listen, I will be eighty when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are put into office, January twentieth, yes! nineteen eighty-one. <laughs> That's going to be my birthday present. <laughs> you mean 2021. Yes, indeed. Well, you know what, Roland Bynum? You do not look it one bit. Not at all. Um, never would I ever guess that. You don't sound like that. You don't look like that. Not that there's anything wrong with looking 80, but you don't. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's in the water, Dominic. It's in the water. Uh-huh. And, you, and you're playing basketball, which, you know, um, is, is a big part of your, you know, wellness and fitness. You were saying all the courts are closed but typically you play every single week oh yeah absolutely and but but you know what i just think you know having a relationship with god i've lost a lot of friends in my book when i came to kgfj in 1967 i read off names and every single one of the jobs and people that i met that first day at kgfj have all transitioned and I didn't realize it until I was rereading my book. The, la- the last one, I mean, we just lost Brad uh, July the 5th, two days uh, later, I lost my sister. We just lost Tom Reed um, uh, July the, the 13th, and we had his uh, trend, uh, eulogy a couple of weeks ago. When I read that, I realized how blessed I am. Every single person that I met when I came to KGFJ have all transitioned. And I'm still alive. I, I just count my blessings every single day. And I'm just grateful for that. Still alive. Not just still alive. Still just working it out. I mean, not even retiring or anything. And releasing your first book on Saturday, which we can get on Amazon. We don't even have to go out and uh, be socially close to anyone. We can remain our di- in our distance and still buy the book God Shot. Let's go to Daryl calling from L.A. Good morning, Daryl. Daryl, are you with me? I guess Daryl's not ready. We're going to Howard from L.A. Good morning, Howard. Thanks for your patience. Good morning, it's Daryl. Oh, oh, that's Daryl? Okay, I don't know what's... Go- yeah. uh, okay, yeah. we're having phone issues. Uh, hi, hi, Daryl. Hi, good morning. Uh, What's yeah, on your I mind? Was, um, yeah, I just uh, I heard uh, Roland, so I'm not breaking anonymity. I was there at the castle with Mr. Roland, and, he, and I just want to congratulate him on the book and uh, say that uh, we as a group, uh, we proud, you know, Cosmo and Lee, all of us, you know, we proud of you and uh, keep up the good work. I listen to you every uh, Saturday when you're on, and uh, uh, just, uh, just saying congratulations, appreciate you, and uh, you know, it's inspiration. You're inspiration, Mr. Rosen. Indeed, he and, and is. Darryl, 
you, Daryl, I'm a castle giant too. And, and let me tell you about my anonymity. Um, the program talks about anonymity, but I don't have a problem with sharing that I'm a recovering person. And I'm going to tell you why. If I tell my story, there's somebody out there who probably needs to hear the story. Give them inspiration that, they, that if I, I can, you can too. And, um, and, and there are so many of us that we share our story. We know within the program, uh, the, the, the traditions and, and, and we talk about anonymity, but I've been given a special opportunity to shed my anonymity and to say for those out there who are still struggling with addiction problems that you can you can do this and that it's important that you find somebody that find a god of your understanding and find somebody and get into a program and get your life together because god has a lot more in store for you he didn't make junk and he said god of a, a, a wonderful and loving god just don't make junk and that's not a part of this realm that's not a part of this world so know that for yourself and be somebody because you are somebody. And uh, how many years um, sobriety? 30, 31, 31 years I've been clean. Wow, that's amazing. And, and, that and is Dominique, inspiring. I, start, I started the process 36 years ago. So it took me five years of going in and out. And, uh, and uh, before I finally surrendered and said, hey, you know what? I just know God didn't make me to be junk. I know he's got something for me to do. And so this is a part of what he wants me to do and to inspire others. And that's what I'm going to do until they lay me down. This is what I'm going to do. Well, you know what, family? A lot of people want to talk to you, Roland Bynum. And don't worry, we will give you the opportunity to talk to Roland. Everyone's missing you Saturday. They're calling me. So I am so honored to have the opportunity to give the people what they want, which they is want. an opportunity to talk with the great Roland Bynum to celebrate the release of your book, God Shot. We will continue that. We are broadcasting live from the 1-800-THE-LAW-2 studio, radio free, of course. 102.3 KJLH.